Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our first webinar for the year, WaterCan's first webinar for the year. Um, I feel that I just want to explain how this came about in terms of why we chose this topic as how to become a water activist or water champion. Last year, um, we carried out a week of water testing. And I should, I want to say surprising, but it wasn't surprising that um, we found that a lot of our rivers and streams have high levels of E. coli. And we also found pockets of tap water that was not uh, good for drinking. So we then started talking about, okay, we have these testing kits, we're getting them out to people, but we need to also then help people if they test their water and they find that their water is actually not drinkable, what do they do? So we started talking about the steps of what should you do if um, you find that there's something wrong with your water. And we developed this kind of um, how to become a water activist, water champion. But at the same time, in many parts of the country, the frustration, the anger, um, the, the complete disillusionment of, you know, with regards to our water supply has been growing. And uh, so we've had people say to us, well, it's not enough that you tell us to test, what else? You know, they, they, they're getting their frustration out on us and we, we're saying, okay, we need to figure this out. And that's why we're bringing people together from that are doing different kinds of things to build water activism and to share experiences. Um, I'm trying, we're still trying to get hold of Samuel. We've been struggling to get him on, online, but I also know that uh, Umduduzi uh, Chavalala is on and he will, he will share his experiences from the VAL. So um, that is, I think Jackie, you've got your hand up before I've even raised anything for a question. So is there a, is there a procedure issue? The chat's disabled. So I just wondered if you could enable the chat. Okay, we will we will enable the chat. Thank you for bringing that to our our attention, which would be a really nice thing if people could add into the chat uh, their names, who they are, and um, their interest in the topic. Uh, Jackie, you can put your hand down. Thank you. Um, so I want to share my screen quickly before I hand over to the speakers because. Why, why it's important for me to do that is to just go through the, the, the kind of steps that we've come up with. But then when you're listening to our speakers, you will be able to follow um, that some of these steps have worked for some people and some haven't. So there isn't this prescribed, oh, there's one to 10 steps and you've got to follow it. I think in some areas it will be very different. Um, so of course we're saying, I want to just put this up and share with you quickly. Okay, so I know that this is a bit small, but it's just some suggested steps to follow. And um, what we're saying is, of course, start by identifying the water related to the problem in your area. So is it polluted drinking water? Is it burst pipes? Is it sewage overflows? Is it access? Is it dumping? There's a whole range of issues and it's different depending on where we go. Um, we are trying to work on the chat, so bear with us, please. We'll get it as soon as we get it up and running. I'll let you know. Um, and then, of course, we can't work on our own, and we've realized that you know, speak to people, get a few people in your street, and that's something that the city of you know the jo in Joburg area, the Joburg Water Crisis Committee is now doing, where they're trying to get people in streets and street committees to kind of talk about the challenges and work together on how to solve the issues around the water issues that we're facing. Um, of course, it's very useful to be able to test our water. And water can, we have a testing kit, uh, a sample kit, which allows you to test a number of parameters, including pH, alkalinity, hardness, uh, chlorine, and then of course, bacterial tests, which is E. coli and coliform. So we have that. And you can then upload that information onto a map that we are launching on the 14th of February. And 
so that everybody can then go on. And these, the data here is citizens' data. It's our activism that we can see uh, what we're doing because we know that we can't trust all the results and all the data coming from government. So that's why we thought, let's have one where citizens and activists, uh, citizen scientists and activists can upload their data. Um, and then we are saying, okay, you've tested, the water is contaminated, what do you do? And we are saying, firstly, verify with people in your area, like we saw last week, where someone had blue water in their tap. I'm sure everyone knew about that blue water, but it was an isolated area. Um, that does not mean it won't happen in other parts because it is happening with, if you're going to have water shedding as we're having, and then water going through, you will have reaction with the dry pipes and then po potential for more pollution will occur. So then that would happen. So verify um, that that is going on. And then importantly is alert the municipality, your local councillor, and at the same time alert the media. We know that many of our municipalities don't move an inch unless we embarrass them. And sadly, that is, that is where our, our politics has come to, that we have to create that embarrassment, but also create awareness. I mean, you, if people are getting get ill with drinking that water, it is important to create as much awareness around it as possible. We did that last year where we found uh, high levels of um, total coliform and E. coli in a town, Winburg, in the Free State. And the municipality was quite on the ball. I mean, within 30 minutes of us sending them the results saying, listen, you've got to check your water, they issued a boil note. So they were clear that they needed to fix it. It hasn't always been like that. I see some of the names on the list who helped test water last year. And you did alert your municipalities and nothing happened. But we've got to carry on, right? So then, in if if necessary, engage with the municipality to ensure that you have a boil notice. And if no response is received from the municipality, then it's time to mobilize your community and organize a public campaign, whether it's a petition, a protest, legal action. And that's some of the things we will touch on today, where different people are doing different things. But you can't stop. You have to, we saying that to be a water activist, a water champion, we need to constantly test our water. Because I've spoken to so many people who say they don't trust the tap that the water that's coming out of the tap, not the tap that's coming out of the water. Um, and so we need to test. We can't say we can't say, oh, we don't trust it, but we haven't tested it, right? There are parts where the water quality is pretty good. And also connect to other organizations. There are numerous environmental, climate change, social justice organizations across the country. Connect to them and let's make our voices loud. Because if we are just, um, if we are just working on a few things, we won't, sorry, I'm getting messages as it's coming in and it's distracting me a little bit. Uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, we, we can't speak on our own. We need to create a movement. We need to create a loud voice. And then, of course, we need to build awareness because let's be honest, South Africans, we are wasteful. We waste only until we don't have it. And then we want to have, you know, we, we use too much water, we abuse the amount of water, and we only appreciate it when we don't have it. We I have seen in very... Um, kind of in many areas where people are have construction and the rubble just runs into stormwater. That rubble damages the infrastructure. That rubble destroys our pipes. And then you want like and then we have burst pipes as well as all the failed municipal uh, attention given to our, our infrastructure. So we need to also be mindful of that. We need to create awareness in schools, religious institutions, sports groups like canoeing South Africa, Create awareness on social media. And these days with social media, you can really make things spread. And that's what we need to, we need to support each other and, um, and build uh, awareness around our water and water activism. So on that note, that is a lot. But the, the point of our discussion today is that we want to see and we want your ideas to keep building activism and to keep building water activism. Um, 
I'm going to now, uh, I don't know, I will be, if any questions or anything in the chat or if people just introducing, that's great. But if anything is there that I need to take note of, admin will let me know. Um, I'm going to now hand over to our first speaker. Um, we can obviously, this is a discussion and we will continue discussing, but the first speaker we have today is Sibongile Mtungwa. Sibongile is sitting in KZN at the moment. Um, she's the director for Women's Leadership and Training Program. It is an NGO. Uh, she is involved in grassroots activism on social and climate justice. She's a part of the South African Water Caucus, and she focuses specifically on leadership, gender, climate change, and water. She's also the Women International Rivers Defender. Um, and she holds a master's in international development and is a senior Atlantic fellow for health equity in South Africa. Um, Sibongile, Sibongile is wearing many hats and you'll definitely get the sense when she talks about some of the challenges that she's facing in KZN. She will address firstly, um, the kind of challenges that she faces, why she got involved in water activism and what she's doing uh, to combat that, and what her activism has meant for her. Sibongile, over to you. Thank you very much, Faril. Uh, and hello, everyone. Uh, I thank you very much for the introduction as well. Um, yeah, so as Faril has indicated, <laughs> I work in Gwazulu Natal. Uh, basically, why I do the work that I do. It's a long, long story dating back from 1994. As a little girl uh, from high school, seeing for the first time that girls had a role to play in this, in society. But uh, what struck me at that time was that. Uh, it didn't seem like it was possible for girls to do anything in a patriarchal community where men, you know, do everything, say everything and decide everything. So that has been my biggest uh, challenge all along. However, in 1994, I found a way because I got involved with a women's leadership and, and training program as a trainee at that time. And uh, that continued and I learned uh, so much about the rights of girls and women. That was a huge thing for me because it made me to understand the struggles that I was facing, I was facing personally, but also the struggles of many other girls in the community. And from then, I think I decided what I have Sorry, Sibongile, I think we've lost you. Maybe you could put your video off. Sibongile? Sorry, I think we've lost Sibongile. Uh, just give us two seconds to try and fix this up. Sorry, everyone, uh, it's not your system. We've lost Sibongile, I think. Until she comes back, I'm going to move over to the next speaker so we don't lose too much time. So Roger, can you do your presentation and I will message Simon Gillian and maybe call her in to, to, to speak. Um, but before Roger, I just wanna give an introduction to Roger so that people know um, a little bit about Roger. He's from a group called Let's Change Ba Palaborwa. And he is involved in local government, its transition from apartheid and subsequent re-establishment in terms of the new constitution and legislative regime, 
Um, he's been, he's, he was involved as a town clerk, a municipal manager consultant, uh, and he subsequently worked in parliament as Cope's sole researcher and ghost speechwriter. Now a resident of Palaborwa, where he is a member, member of Let's Change Bar Palaborwa, a community-based NPC, affiliated to Outas CAN network, which aims to improve municipal service delivery. And also important to note about um, La Palaborwa is that it started out with, you know, the beginning activism, and it has progressed to quite a, a process. And I think others would enjoy and learn quite a bit from, uh, from Roger's talk. Roger, over to you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is, this is my opening slide. Um, and I, it's really about the collapse of water and sanitation infrastructure and service delivery and in Pelabora uh, and the resultant pollution and degradation of the environment and the water resources. Uh, and in my view, ultimately, this is a failure in governance. Um, as, 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 as you will know, uh, across the country at local government level, communities are rising. Um, and let's change, but Pelabora is one of these community initiatives. Uh, we are a, a non-profit uh, MPC company uh, in Pelabora, and our aim is to address the collapsing state of our municipal infrastructure and failing service delivery and the delinquent governance of the municipality. Um, ultimately, if you can't sort out the governance, you're not going to sort out the infrastructure and the failing service delivery. If you look at the state of Pelabora, uh, once a, 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 a town of the year, uh, today, the town's infrastructure and basic service delivery, be it its roads, electricity, water and sanitation, are all in a state of dysfunction and collapse. Um, and ultimately, this is because of poor uh, and unlawful uh, budgeting by the municipality and little of any maintenance, uh, no refurbishment or replacement of infrastructure due to age, and no augmentation uh, of the infrastructure given uh, development and, and, and densification. So as matters stand in Palabora, there is neither a plan or any funding to work towards fixing the town's infrastructure, except to affect reactive maintenance. So it, basically, there is no political will by the municipality uh, to fix the infrastructure. It's, it's important that when one looks uh, at, um, at water and sanitation, that one understands the institutional arrangements. Um, and for that, you need to look at the Water Services Act. Uh, and in our case, the Mapani District Municipality is the Water Services Authority, and the local Bapelabora Municipality, in turn, is the Water, service, water Services Provider, and the Pele Northern Water is the Bulk Water Supplier. The point here is you need to understand the institutional arrangements in your area. Um, if we look at the impact of failing service delivery uh, um, of water and sanitation in Pelabora, it's important to note that Pelabora is the only town in South Africa with direct access into the Kruger National Park. Our economy is based on mining and tourism and we are facing continual failures in the sewage infrastructure, which results in continual sewage spillages in the town. This sewage uh, is flowing through, our resi through residential properties in town, down our streets, into our stormwater system, into our water courses, and into our streams, uh, causing health concerns and the pollution and degradation to the environment in a sensitive and strategic location, uh, given our, our, our um, closeness to the Kruger National Park. Um, much of the sewage ends up flowing into the tributaries of the Tutsi River, which in turn flows into the Ulifans River, which in turn flows through the Kruger National Park, and then ends up in the Masinga Dam in Mozambique. Um, if one looks at the ecology of the Tutsi River, the entire ecology of the, of the river has changed. It used to flow seasonally, 
And now because of the sewage, it's now perennial. Um, we have also worked closely with uh, uh, officials from the Kruger National Park who are also concerned and they are collaborating with us, but because they are a, a, an organ of state, uh, they, they've, they've got to uh, tread lightly because of, of the need for cooperative relations with other organs of state. Um, and the impact of, these, of, this, uh, of this situation uh, also impacts on our economy uh, because the this, this stench and, and, and the sewage flowing down our streets is impacting on our tourism and hospitality sector. We have reports of, of people uh, arriving in, in Palabora and then cancelling the accommodation and leaving. Um, here are some slides, uh, some pictures of, of the situation in the town. So what actions have we taken? Uh, we have endeavoured to engage both municipalities, both the district and the local municipalities. We examined the IDPs of the municipalities and, and we noted that for 10 years, at least, the IDPs of these municipalities have noted the deteriorating state of the infrastructure and the need for action. And yet for 10 years, both of those municipalities in our view irrationally and delinquently have failed to set aside funding. Um, in respect of the current uh, RDP and budget, uh, we participated in the, in the RDP and budget uh, consultation process of both municipalities. We pointed out to them that they stood in contravention of sections 152 and 153 of the constitution. Um, 152 is basically relates to the inability to provide services in a sustainable manner. And section 153 relates to not uh, budgeting for the basic needs of the community and the, the, the maintenance of the sewage and, uh, sewage and water infrastructure uh, are basic needs of the community. And that's apart from other legislative uh, uh, provisions. Um, what was the municipality's response? They blatantly said to us that there was no plan to, infrastructure, to fix the infrastructure and that they were not prepared to budget anything more than to undertake reactive maintenance. This, in our view, is reckless and delinquent and unlawful. So what did we do? Uh, we, we approached the, the Minister of Water and Sanitation, uh, and we asked the Minister of Water and, and Sanitation to intervene in terms of Section 63 uh, of the, of the uh, Water Services Act, given the inability of the Water Services Authority and the water services provider that both municipalities to effectively perform their functions uh, and a failure to provide water and sanitation services to the communities of Bapelabora in a sustainable manner. Um, the response that we got from water and sanitation uh, was wholly inadequate and in our view, in, in, uh, 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 inaccurate. And we have subsequent to that, uh, rebutted uh, um, their reply, um, but it, it, as of this point, uh, we have not received a reply. Uh, we also participated in, in Water Can's uh, uh, sampling initiative, and the results clearly indicated that the natural water courses around Pelabora are highly contaminated with sewage to an extent that poses a threat to the health and well-being of humans, wildlife, uh, and the environment. Um, these are some of the uh, water can uh, test results um, as we were working on them. And, and these are some of the uh, results that emanated out of, out of the water can uh, initiative for which we are uh, very grateful. Um, we also found out through investigations that the municipality had previously been issued with directives uh, from the uh, Department of Water, uh, Water and Sanitation, uh, which they had simply not complied with or had not fully complied with. So what did we do? We went and looked at the uh, at NEMA, we went and looked at the uh, National Water Act, 
And we noticed that those acts provide, at, at near the back of those acts, provide for uh, criminal charges. And so what we did was we laid uh, criminal charges against the municipal managers of both municipalities and the municipalities themselves as organs of government. Uh, and we charged them in terms of NEMA, uh, in, terms of the, and in terms of the National Water Act, and in terms of the constitution. We went and laid those charges at the police station. Uh, there's a copy of, of our affidavit um, that was also supplied when we, when we lodged the uh, criminal uh, complaint. Um, and lo and behold, we got a very quick response to the charges from the Green Scorpions sitting in the Department of Forestry, Fisheries and Environmental Affairs. They subsequently handed over the matter to the Department of Water and Sanitation, who also, I must admit, quick, uh, picked up the baton quickly. Um, we've had a virtual meeting with uh, officials from DWS. Uh, we handed over a 200-page dossier uh, of evidence that we had uh, collated over time. And Department of Water and Sanitation are now pursuing criminal, a criminal case against the municipality. Uh, but because of the initial uh, poor response from, uh, from uh, national government, uh, we, also, we also lodged complaints with the Public Protector and the Human Rights uh, Commission, and those two matters are currently live. So what lessons have we learned? Firstly, I, I believe that as citizens, as community-based organizations, we all have more power than what we think we have. Secondly, laying criminal charges, uh, as we did, places the onus on the state to investigate and prosecute. Going this route of laying criminal charges means that no community financial resources are needed. As we speak, Department of Water and Sanitation are further investigating. And I guess that once they've completed their investigation, they will then hand over the matter to, uh, to the NPA and the NPA will then prosecute. So here's a way of, of getting action at essentially no cost to the community. So we are saying, we're encouraging you Go out there, go and lay the charges, reclaim your power. Um, and we are also saying, as a, as a community-based organization, let's collaborate. Collaboration multiplies our strength. We can learn so much from one another. We can develop best practice. <clears throat> um, as an organization, let's change the Pelabora. Uh, is now affiliated and we collaborate with Outer's uh, CAN Citizen Ac Action Network and with Outer's Water CAN. So let's collaborate. And I'm also posing the question, is there not a bigger coordinating role for Outer uh, and Outer's uh, CAN and Water CAN networks? Is there not a bigger role for them to play and bringing us together as community-based organizations, maybe providing a platform where we can consult and share ideas and develop best practice. So finally, as citizens, we have more power than what we think we have. And as Aristotle said, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Let's work together, let's collaborate, let's share ideas, and I'm planting the seed for greater participation by outer uh, can and um, and water can. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Roger. I'm sure there's going to be quite a few questions um, to you know directed at you, but I still I just want to have Sibongile. Uh, she's back with us. Sibongile, I think if it's better and you want to keep your video off, I think everyone would be okay with that. Um, and then I will give, uh, I, would, I would like uh, Umduduzi uh, Shabalala to just have a few words as well after Sibongile, and then we can open the floor for questions. So please be patient with us. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you very much. And I'm sorry for the switching off to other networks. The other one just decided to go. 
So um, I think I'm just going to go straight to why do I get, uh, how do I got involved and why? Basically, in tw in 2018, we ran, um, as women's leadership and training program, we work with girls and young women. And because of that, they've got this role of fetching water in the rural areas, as you know, that that is one of their main tasks. So we discovered that uh, there were many issues in relation to water. There was so much that we didn't know, but there was so much that we were seeing as well. The pollution in communities was increasing and it ended up in, in our water sources, the streams, the rivers and the springs. And that made us to realize that the water that we were drinking and the girls, the, the water that the girls uh, were fetching from the rivers um, was no longer as clean as we used to know it. But we didn't know how dirty it was. And it gave us a shock to understand that all the water that we were using from, especially from the rivers and streams, that water was not supposed to be, was not good for consumption. And some of the water was not even good for washing and was also not good for, for watering the, the, the gardens as we also run agroecology gardens in our homes. So that gave us a wake up call to say, what is going on? Where is our water? And also the diseases that we were, the skin diseases that we were noticing amongst uh, young people, especially, it, it was an indication that something is not right with the water. And the situation uh, in this area, someone is going to ask why we, we drink water from the rivers, streams and springs. That is the only option we have. And also maybe that's the only thing that we know from way back. Those uh, water sources have sustained us for a long, long time. And so we know that as, as safe. But also we realize that there are water pipes that are installed in our communities, but most of the times they are dry. And that uh, increase, it, it, it got worse when there are dry uh, spells, longer dry spells, because it meant that there would be no water and then those, those, those pipes would be dry. And it became a concern for us because when girls have to go to the rivers, they have to walk longer hours. And when they have to go to the springs, they will find long queues at the spring. So it made, it, it made them to stay to spend a lot of, of time at the water sources and walking to the water sources and also waiting for their tents to get the their water. So those are the issues that were pushed us uh, to work on water issues, but we didn't know that the water was not supposed to be used at household level. And in 2020, then COVID came, that uh, made the situation even worse because the the main uh, 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 resource that was needed at that time was water to make sure that COVID you know doesn't get uh, bad, and because of that, it made us to do a lot of education around water, testing the water and educating communities about the waste that uh, ends up in, 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 in rivers. And most of the waste, it's animal waste and uh, it's uh, dead animals, but also plastic and increased a lot uh, in the last past uh, five years in our rivers. And those are the waste that we, we were seeing. But what we were not seeing is other kind of waste that um, made our, our E. coli levels to be very high. And that needed a, a lot of testing. And with that testing, the girls were trained to do the water testing. And uh, 40 of them at the beginning were running up uh, and down in the streams and rivers, testing the water. And that uh, number grew sorry, it increased and we now today we've got more than 100 girls who are doing this work at different uh, times and places. And the, the, the one group that uh, showed us that girls are very active in this area of water because it is their concern. The one group did the, the water testing in, um, 
on, on the 31st of December, 2022. And we were expecting the girls to be all, you know, everywhere and doing all the things that they should be doing. But no, they decided that for them, they will spend the 31st of December testing the water in their areas. And what we are finding is that there's a lot of education that still needs to be done because people th still believe that clear water is clean water. And we are discovering that all the clear water that we have is not supposed to be used for, for human consumption. And if some of the water has to be, uh, has to be cleaned, and has to be boiled and everything to be to be used. So because of that, we are identifying, educating the communities as one of the main things uh, so that people can understand the issues. And we have worked with the traditional leaders as well in the areas because they are the ones who have got the final say or on, on what can be done on water, not not to, not to say they are overriding the municipality, but the communities seem to understand and listen to what the traditional leaders are saying. So because of that, we have worked with them so that they run awareness in their meetings and also so that they, they work with girls. So for the first time, the traditional authorities, the four that we work with, they uh, incorporated the girls into their water committees so that the girls also sit at the decision-making level within the tribal authorities so that they can educate. So their main role is to educate um, uh, communities, but also to educate the members of the traditional councils about these water issues and be able to take them forward. So that's one success that we have seen that for the first time that girls sit with traditional leaders and then they speak with authority within those structures. But also going forward, how do we maintain that level of participation and engagement uh, to, to, to be strengthened and to go forward and influence uh, even beyond the traditional authority. One of the things also that we saw as a highlight is when the girls pro uh, um, uh, uh, talked about their case of uh, and their situation within the Human Rights Commission, and that uh, in, in 2022 that helped also the work of girls to be recognized at that level. But what we're still battling with, um, and I had the previous speaker, they have done a lot in terms of working with the municipalities. What we haven't succeeded a, a lot in doing is to work with municipalities on responding to these water issues or when especially when it's re, when it's um, um uh, rivers or, or or natural water systems so we still need a lot to you know to do when it comes to that and we hope that during this session we will be able to get more ideas on how do they um, other groups do that thank you Thank you so much, Sibongile. I know that you have uh, so much more that you can share. Um, and we, I think we, we would have, we're going to have more of a focus on, on the work that you've done. I think so far, it's clear that there's an issue of sanitation. Um, you know, I think it was, and I, th I see she's online, Maria Lifrenk, who said that government is the biggest polluter at the moment. And that says something, and it's a lot of sewage pollution. We know that only, uh, less than 40% of South Africans have a tap in their homes. We know that 51% of our water treatment plants are in a critical state. And 23 out of 900 um, uh, sanitation wastewater treatment plants actually only received a green drop certification. So it is quite concerning and hence the reason that I think both Roger and Sibongile have spoken about um, sewage and sanitation spillages and infrastructure. So what we've heard of is legal challenges and, and, and Roger's really given us some food for thought with some clever ideas. Sibongile has talked about mobilization, education and awareness. I really do like the idea of bringing in the youth uh, and young women who are taking this on and are passionate about it. We need to do that. We need to do a lot more of creating uh, awareness amongst uh, young people, everyone actually, because water affects us all in different ways. I now want uh, Ndu to just you know, introduce the project um, that he will, he's from the Val Environmental Justice Alliance. 
And they've been working for sure, decades in the Val area on air pollution, as well as water. And um, some of the challenges that they face is, is not, is, is, is from, from big companies like Sasol. So uh, Mdu, over to you. You have just a little bit of time just to introduce what Veja does and uh, your plans over the next while, because I'd really like to have more of a, of, of a discussion and, and questions if there are any. Thank you. Many thanks, Priyel. Um, good day, everyone. My name is Ndudusi Shabalala here in Val. I've been working with the Val Environmental Justice Alliance uh, for more than 10 years, I believe, in the water quality campaign. Uh, VEJA is a community-based organization here in VAL with different community members across the VAL uh, working in issues of environmental justice, uh, quality, water quality, climate change, and, and waste. Yes, so I've been, I've been in the water quality campaign. Uh, member of, also VEJA is a member of the South African Water Caucus in the Gauteng province, Gauteng Water Caucus. Uh, but uh, last year, about last year, they started a campaign. I think it was a national campaign with the South African Water Caucus about the water testing that uh, Feriel was, was speaking about earlier on. So in December as well, like Mamsbo mentioned that they did the water testing. We also did a water testing of the Val Barrage. Uh, other areas also did their testing in Free State, I believe, and Pumalanga. But yes, we, we did the Val Barrage testing here in Val. And of course, uh, there's a serious problem of E. coli. Uh, if people will remember, the Val, the Val River was also declared uh, at this uh, state, state of the nation a uh, concern when, when there was a Val River inquiry. It was in 2018, if I remember. Yeah, it's been some time now. And the, the rainwater has set up a, what they call Section 63, which VEJA forms part of that steering committee, which is chaired by rainwater and the Department of Water and Sanitation. So in my own opinion, I think there's not, there's not enough progress in that process. Because um, I mean, for instance, in Fule in the local municipality, we have about three waterworks. It's Bukeng Works, uh, here in Sibukeng. We have the Lukeil in Sharpville, and we have the Ritzbrate Waterworks, which is far, far west in the just behind Bupilong towards the farms in Lewis Race. All of these waterworks, they are dysfunctional. Uh, Spoken Works has been under upgrade for more than 10 years also, I think, but nothing, nothing promising. It's not functional as yet. I don't know what's happening there. <laughs> Perhaps uh, Comrade Simpson will know the details. Uh, I don't know, but nothing is happening there because they, don't, they are not receiving sewage at the moment. And you wonder if they're not receiving sewage, where's the sewage going? Because people are flushing every day anyway. So there is a serious problem of E. coli. Um, this year, we, we, are, we are joining the, the, the campaign, uh, uh, how to be, to be a water warrior, because we are continuing. We have, we have the water test, which we were willing to start uh, during the wetlands day last week, was it this week or? Oh. So the testing kit is not with us, specifically with me here in Sibukeng, but other people have it which we are meeting as Gauteng Water Caucus. I'm hoping I'm going to receive it later this week because uh, we wanted to test uh, again uh, the red spray. We have a red spray which is moving along, smoking the side of, of the Val River. It's going into the Val. So we want to monitor that. Um, one, of the, one of the campaigns we are, we are going to do this year is more awareness. Um, the, on, during March, we are going to have the World, World, World Rivers Week, yes. International Rivers Week, we are going to do some awareness, perhaps a community walk about, or, but we also want to do something like a clean, clean up campaign of the Ritzbrate catchment. 
Uh, I'm not sure. Also, in the Sasolberg area, there will be people in the Louis Divorce Catchment Forum who are doing some work for Veja. And yeah, we will be reporting in the Water Caucus, perhaps in such platforms like this webinar as well during the year, because we, we have planned quite a quite a few of, of these events, even in even in even in May. Not sure about May, but in June during the Environment Day, we're also going to have something. Um, we are going to host a, a women and, and water rights uh, webinar. I'm not sure if it's going to be a webinar, but we are going to have a, a in-person event about women and water rights uh, workshop later this year um, as the water quality campaign of Veja. So there's quite a lot of activities. Um, I wish I could I could highlight all of them each by but I just don't have the airplane with me. Um, the, yeah, but um, we, yeah, we are also willing to, to host, you know, webinars and, and talk about, especially the Val River experience. There's quite a lot of experiences that, that Veja has been monitoring, especially with communities. Um, there are different types of water users, as we may know. We, we have been working close with spiritual water users who are using water every day. They have their own story to tell. We wrote about, I think, three chapters mm -hmm. in, this, in this subject about uh, spiritual water users from the identifying their, their contact with water and, and use and different types of beliefs or use and how do they, because they, we have realized after engaging with them that they also have their own ways of testing water. Uh, testing water is quite so important uh, because people interact with water every day. So they have their own ways of testing water. You know, even though we've had quite a lot of stories in South Africa about people drowning during floods, which is one of their methods that they don't ever go to rivers during floods. So, yeah. It's, um, it, it, it's another element of awareness that people need needs to be aware of, you know, because uh, there's a lot of aspects that people interact with water every day in our lives. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah, thank you for that. Thanks, Andrew, and thanks for jumping in at you know such short notice. I think that it's great to for people to hear that there's a lot. I mean, just from the three speakers we've had, there's a lot happening around the country. Uh, on water, and we haven't even touched um, the tip of the iceberg, but what we need to do is we need to have to link up because working in isolation is reducing the strength um, and the power of the campaigns that we are running. So I think that we need to look at how do we strengthen um, our connections and networks, etc. So that is key for me. Um, some of the take homes that I've got is that we definitely need to increase testing and that's something we will be doing as WaterCan. Um, I've also got an announcement that was sent to me by the Joburg Water Crisis Committee that they're having a public campaign on the 14th of February where they want to put out posters in front of people's houses, in your streets, basically uh, saying that share the love, uh, fix our water infrastructure. Um, we as well as WaterCan will be doing things on the 14th of March, which is what Ndu mentioned in terms of International Day of Action for Rivers. We want to do a, a river cleanup, so we might look for partners on that one. We don't want to do it on our own, so that's something we can chat about. On the 17th or 18th, we want to hold a, pa a panel discussion at Constitutional Hill on um, water as a basic human right. And so there's lots of activities that are that are happening, but I'm hoping that we can try to create this, um, this movement and build the connections amongst us so that we don't speak with one voice. I think when, La uh, when LCBP, Roger and, and, and the team go to court, the rest of us must be issuing statements or be online. When Undu is doing a community walk uh, around the rivers, those pictures must come to all of us. Those pictures must be spread out across South Africa. And I think it's not just, um, you know, it's not, we, we have a lot of people from Gauteng. Sibongile is obviously from KZN, um, 
just to know that she'll be working with 20 young women to train them and to get them to test water on a monthly level. So there's a lot that needs to happen and we can share those experiences and not be isolated tweets. It must be like a bombardment. Anyway, are there any points or questions anyone wants to raise issues? Um, someone has asked how to get in touch with Watercan. We will put our email address onto the chat, our Twitter, uh, goodie <laughs> handle and uh, other information that you may need. So it will go onto the chat now. Toto wants to speak, so I'm going to allow you to talk. Toto. Oh, thanks, thanks. Uh, greetings, everyone. It's Toto here from East Rand. I just touched by the story that's been uh, highlighted by Mdu uh, with regard to rivers. Just wanted to check uh, Mdu. Uh, People who perform ritual on our rivers, uh, are they not polluting uh, our rivers? And yeah, that's what I wanted to, to okay. challenge that. Thanks. And, and, and also at, at, at Ekuruling, uh, we are faced by acid mine drainage. Uh, I think not, nothing has been done in terms of acid mine drainage. Uh, now we're facing a uh, rain left, right, and center, whereby there's other communities who staying on top of the tailings dams. Then when it's raining, it's a mess. So just visit uh, Jerusalem and formal settlement, whereby we, this thing led uh, 2017 five year boy fell in a mine shaft. So those are the challenges that we are faced. So you, we, are hoping, we are hoping the, the collaboration will assist. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. I mean, I think that um, in, as water can be focusing on the water quality and but I do know like uh, the Federation for Sustainable Environment, Maria Glyphorin focuses on um, uh, acid mine drainage and uh, mine pollution. She's on she's on the chat. So maybe you can connect with her as well if she hasn't already been in touch. With um, yes, thanks, thanks for that. OK, there's some questions in the Okay, so Elka Mugova, sorry, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, about acid mine drainage uh, says you can get also get in touch with, I'm going to say her or him, I'm sorry, Elka. Um, um, Faiza Mayer says, since we are not all living close to rivers, but we know we all get water from them, even in the urban areas, how can we support, sorry, how can we support see that? I'm assuming actions around. Can you help me with that admin? Sorry, Faiza, I'm just looking for your question. Ah, there. How do we support World River Day? I think that we'll we'll explore that question, Faiza, and I'm happy to have that conversation with you um, in terms of how do we make this something that's, you know, that goes broader. In terms of the importance of rivers, and that's that. I mean, we don't we live near streams, and but I I do think that that is something we should look at. How do we get to people who aren't living near rivers? Yeah, so we'll definitely link up. Um, Ian Erasmus says it would be very valuable to have a how to guide step by step and how to lay criminal charges against polluters such as municipalities. Roger, do you want to answer that? Sorry. Uh, yeah. Look, I'm. I'm. It's. It's. It's actually very simple. Um, I think, as far as I know, Feral, you are going to uh, share um, the slides that I that I presented. I think the charges that need to be laid uh, are, are are set out um, in the, in the, in that document. Uh, it's in terms of the national uh, the NEMA and in terms of the, uh, the the water the water act. Um, and it's very simple. You simply go to the police station and you lodge those, you lodge those complaints. Um, but what I want to say is that um, what, what we are dealing with here are, 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 are citizens, community-based, basically small, small community-based organizations. Um, and, and most of us have the same problem. Um, we have a lack of, of of access to resources, to expertise, uh, and to and to information. Um, 
and um, I've, I believe that there needs to be some sort of uh, national umbrella um, entity um, th that community-based organizations can plug into um, to access uh, resources, to access expertise, to access information. Um, so that's something I would like to see. But if anybody wants to, to lay criminal charges, they're more than welcome to contact us. Um, mm -hmm. Our contact details are, are in, in, the, in the chat. In the chat. Thank you, thank you, Raja, and uh, good to put your, yeah, I think we will share the presentation, and if people want to have, only with permission, of course, because of, uh, you know, Poppy, if Sibongili and Mdu are happy to, to share their details, we'll share that as well with the recording of the webinar. Um, Ian says, I mean, a step-by-step -step guide for normal citizens, keeping in mind that most police officers won't even know how to put down that charge on paper. This is true. It creates, it's, it's, a, it's an awareness raising. There is a, two other questions that have come up. One is from Ishmael, uh, who does uh, cleaning up in the Yuxke River and wants to know about the test kit. Please email us. And also Desiree from Guard Dog. Um, we can chat because uh, we want to see how to also get more uh, testing kits as well. So let's chat about that as, and we can, we can, you can email us. Um, sorry, one second. I see someone's hand is raised. Sorry, I've just been alerted to someone who's, uh, can you speak? I uh, think I just want to check who it is. Tifo. Yes, Tifo, you can go ahead. This will be the last comment before we close. Hi, am I? Hi. Yes. Uh, thanks for organizing this webinar. Um, and um, uh, it's good that uh, uh, you sort of are, uh, organize this kind of webinars, specifically regarding our water problems and, and uh, service delivery issues. Uh, that we faced with uh, from the municipalities. Um, I, I, I am a former the Department of Water and Sanitation uh, employee, so I, I, would, I, I gained my knowledge and experience while, work, while working at the department. And one of the challenges we having, in fact, an excellent presentation from Roger, because uh, from my experience, uh, I've, 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 I've realized that the Department of Water and Sanitation, the, the Green Scorpions, they are not willing to lay criminal charges against the uh, municipal managers uh, because of uh, they hide behind the Intergovernmental Relations Act. So because the Bapalaboroa experience is not only uh, uh, an isolated uh, 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 problem. It's, it's widespread across many municipalities. We need to have more of this kind of pro, uh, action that has been taken by Bapa Laborwa uh, to ensure that we, we engage, build up a paper tray and lay criminal charges. And um, being uh, an expert in the field, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to offer my advice as well to any organization which is willing to take up this or to escalate this um, complaints into criminal charges. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you so much. That's exactly what we're looking for. I mean, I think that I like Roger's idea to say, imagine if tomorrow we all go and lay charges against municipal managers who are polluting the rivers. Um, so let's test our waters and let's hold them accountable. And if we have a widespread um, you know, attack or kind of, we will charge you if you are going to be polluting our rivers. I think that's only the time when people are going to stop polluting our rivers. It's not enough to hold a municipality uh, responsible because people still have their jobs and they still carry on as normal. I'm sorry to say that we've run out of time. I know that there's burning questions and burning input because we've had such a lot of uh, people in the chat um, who have been contributing. And I think we want to say 
This is the beginning. We don't want to have a webinar and nothing comes of it. I think there've been a few things. One is people will be looking at uh, LCVP in terms of the court cases. Um, there have been connections being made with VEJA and the Val Environmental Justice Alliance on river cleanups. We would like to partner as well because we were looking at the Yuxke. So, uh, and Sibongil and KZN. So I think we've got, and then TFO is offering his expertise. So I think this is exactly the kind of thing we want to do. Um, for the people that spoke, I, I mean, I'd like to share, when we share the recording, I'd really like to share Roger's details, Sibongile, uh, Unduduzi, and Tefo, if that's okay. And then uh, ours, of course. Thank you so much for joining. Please continue to send us your emails, your messages, and we will try to help you with the testing kits and direct you on how to get them if we can't get them for you. But it has been, and all I always feel like one hour is long when I'm planning these things. And then when I am online, I'm like, we should have been talking for two hours because I think the water situation in our country means that we have to act now. We cannot wait for what's going on with our power. We cannot have a state of, of, of water in terms of what's going on now, but we have to act now before it's too late. Thank you, everyone. We will be in touch. If you have questions, please email us. We will respond. Have a fabulous afternoon.